CataractCoach.com caps or excess right up against the iris. From mid dilated pupil, make sure you still get at least a 5 millimeter excess. This is a complete cataract case of me doing a routine cataract start to finish. There's our paracentesis. And you can see the pupil's reasonable size, about, about 5 millimeters. We'll know more at the very end of the case, right? When we put the eye well in the caps or bag, you can judge it based on that. 6 millimeter optic, therefore, how big is the pupil or the rexus? And then also, of course, you know, my rexus forceps are marked off at 2.5 and, and 5 millimeters on the tip. So putting in some viscoelastic, but look what I'm doing there, a little viscomedriasis, injecting it at the pupil margin just to get a little more expansion of the pupil. And then viscomedriasis remembers, of course, just temporary. As the viscoelastic comes out of the eye, the pupil will come down a little bit. So using our fixation ring and the diamond keratome here to make a nice uh, entrance there in the eye. Caught a little too much conjunctiva, so I shifted that over a little bit. I don't want to have too much uh, conjunctival action and then chemosis, right? So... A little bit of bleeding from the incisions, the way I like it, barely nicking those little vessels. And then those are the forceps, and you can see I quickly measured, and I'm getting about a 5 millimeter pupil. So I want to create this rexus right up against that iris margin, that pupil margin. So as I continue this rexus, I keep that edge of it right up against there. Now, the inclination is to make it smaller because you want to be able to see the whole edge, right? But that's not what you want to do here. Because if you do make it smaller, you can have a tougher time with the next maneuver. Let me set up our scope here a little bit and get in that capsule. There it is, a nice, complete, and intact capsular axis that's just about the exact same size as that pupil, which is 5 millimeters. Now, the hydrodissection, watch carefully, slow and steady. No force here, gentle, gentle. A little bit more fluid. I try to see if the nucleus comes up. We can tap it there in the center. And then uh, I lose viscoelastic from the eye, and there it is. Now the nucleus pops up. So if I had a 4 millimeter rexus, I would not be able to pop up this denser nucleus through that capsule opening. So I really need that at least 5 millimeter, even a little bit bigger than 5 millimeter. And now we're going to go in here with the FACO probe. And let's see, maybe adjusting the tip. And this is nice to see a complete case start to finish. You can see there's no rush at all, a little chemosis. So I'm going to make a couple of cuts there on that conge. And we're going to do that to just help prevent that chemosis from acting up on us. So now put the FACO probe in the eye, and then going to buzz in the middle of it, chop around the other side, and yeah, that's a reasonable amount of density. So I got the nucleus chopped in half, and I'm just going to stay centrally here and emulsify these pieces. There we go, centering up the camera now and the scope. And we'll emulsify these and stay in that central pupillary zone. Um, it comes up nice and easy. The chopper is just feeding the pieces in. Once that first chop is done, there's really uh, not a whole lot left to chop. The rest of the pieces can come up pretty easily. If you need to bring a piece up, you can bring it up and further sub-chop it. But I think just splitting the nucleus into two halves is likely sufficient. So here we'll bring this up. Maybe I'll chop this again. Let's see. Are we? Oh, let go of the iris. Remember, don't want to aspirate the iris. You see how fast those reflexes were. Pow! On it. Don't want to make that mistake. And so now just taking out the last piece of the nucleus. And look at the chopper in that safe position to prevent any capsule from coming forwards. And we're just done, just like that. Nucleus is out very efficiently. Now with cortex removal, we want to make sure we're going to get all the cortex out. So here I kind of keep track mentally. Like, okay, I'll start in this one part, and let's go around, making sure I'm not going to leave anything behind. You don't want to leave cortex underneath the iris, maybe with the caps or bag equator, etc. And if you have any doubts, you can always just use your chopper and your second hand and lift up the iris to get a direct visualization of that. So caps or bag is cleaned up pretty nicely. Really, actually, it looks beautiful. Let's put our cohesive viscoelastic in the capsular bag and fill it up. Here's our cohesive. Now, we'll probably expand the pupil a little bit. Maybe see that rex's edge. There it is. There's that rex's edge. We can see it for sure. Here comes our lens. Looks like a um, preloaded single piece acrylic lens. And let's get that going inside the eye. And here it comes, nice and easy. Deliver that in the capsular bag. Now, very important here, if you don't see the rex's edge directly, please do ensure that the eye well goes in the capsular bag. You don't want the eye well to end up in the sulcus, or one arm in the sulcus, one arm outside. You want it completely in the bag. Now here, I'm, look, I'm looking with the chopper. Look at this. There you go. Lift up the iris just to check around a little bit. Make sure the eye well's in the bag, which it is, and make sure there's no other lens material that's remaining. So it looks pretty clean. So we're still going to go behind the eye well to remove this elastic, even in this smaller pupil case. Now, this is not a t classic small pupil, but it's kind of like a mid-dilated pupil. In cases like this, I want to encourage you, if you've done, you know, 
1,000 cataracts or maybe even 500 cataracts, you don't need to put in a pupil expansion device or rings or hooks. You can actually just do the case like I've shown you here, make that rexus a sufficiently large size. And even in patients with pupils of, let's say, 4 millimeters, I'll do the same technique. It really is very useful to, to learn this. So anyway, keep that in mind, regardless of what the, your pupil size is, remember, you still want that 5 millimeter rexus. And then you can get a case like this that's done very efficiently.